When chemists talk about a crystalline solid, they're referring to a solid where there is a regular repeating arrangement of atoms. We take this two-dimensional example from figure 8.1 in the textbook. Note the regular arrangement of A's and B's. Of course, real atoms live in a three-dimensional world, and uh, that three-dimensional arrangement is called a crystal lattice. Note the top yellow box in the figure with four A's surrounding a B. If you were to translate this one spot to the right, you would again find four A's surrounding a B. Likewise with the bottom square. If you translate it one spot to the left, you get the same arrangement of four B's surrounding an A. These constitute the smallest repeating units in this picture. When we go to three dimensions, the smallest repeating unit is called a unit cell. While there are dozens of unit cells known, we'll focus on three in this module called the cubic unit cells, based on a cubic arrangement of atoms. The simple cubic unit cell, abbreviated SC, is shown here in two different ways. On the left is the space filling model, with the atoms modeled as touching spheres. It may be easier to see the cubic arrangement of atoms in the ball and stick model on the right, of course, solids don't exist as balls held together by sticks. We note that all of the atoms in this picture are identical, with the same radius. So this is one possible unit cell for a solid such as a pure metal. Another arrangement is the body-centered cubic unit cell, abbreviated BCC. The illustrator has highlighted the body atom in blue, but don't be confused all atoms are still identical and the same size. Notice how the orange atoms in the corners have had to separate slightly to accommodate another atom in the center or body of the cell. Finally, we have the face-centered cubic unit cell or FCC. While there is no atom in the middle, there is an atom on each face of the cube. Again, the illustrator has used different colors to distinguish between the face atoms and the corner atoms. But you should know that all of the atoms are identical. In addition to identifying the three unit cells, there are several differences we want to be aware of. One is called unit cell stoichiometry. When we speak of unit cell stoichiometry, we are asking how many atoms are inside the unit cell. It is more complicated than simply counting the number of spheres in the picture. This is because unit cells are defined by the nuclei of the atoms at the corners. That means that different fractions of atoms may be in different unit cells. Here is the simple cubic unit cell. Although it appears that there are eight atoms in the picture, we need to decide how many atoms are inside the cell as defined by the nuclei. You may be able to tell from the ball and stick model that the nuclei are where the sticks would intersect and that a considerable portion of each atom is outside the cube. Here is a different perspective of the space filling model. On the right, the excess parts of all the atoms that are outside the unit cell are shaved off. If you focus on the atom at the top front of the picture, notice that the top half has been shaved off. The front half has been shaved off and the left half has been shaved off. What remains is half of a half of a half, or one-eighth of an atom. Since there are eight atoms, each contributing one-eighth to the simple cubic unit cell, there is a total of one atom inside, as defined by the nuclei. Here is the body-centered unit cell. On the right is a space filling model showing that all of the body atom is inside, but again only one eighth of each corner atom is inside. Eight corner atoms, each contributing one eighth, and one body atom completely inside, total to a unit cell stoichiometry of two for the body centered unit cubic cell. Here is the face centered cubic cell. On the right is a space filling model showing that half of each face atom is inside the cell, but again only one eighth of each corner atom is inside. Eight corner atoms, each contributing one eighth, 
and six face atoms, each contributing one half, total to a unit cell stoichiometry of four for the face-centered cubic cell. There are other differences between unit cells. One is called the coordination number. We ask, how many other atoms does a given atom touch? That is the coordination number. Packing efficiency tells how much volume inside a unit cell is occupied by the atoms. In other words, how much is not empty or void space. One can actually compute this using the geometry of spheres and cubes. The textbook details those geometric calculations if you are interested. Here are our three unit cells. If you focus on the top right atom in the simple cubic cell, notice that it touches the atom to its left. If the structure was extended, it would also touch an atom on its right. It touches the atom below it, and if the structure were extended, would touch an atom above it. It touches an atom behind it, and if the structure were extended, would touch an atom in front of it. The coordination number in the simple cubic is 6. Notice, however, all of the empty space inside of it. Based on the volume of cubes and spheres from geometry, the atoms only take up 52% of the total volume, so we would say the packing efficiency is 52%. In the body-centered cell, the body atom touches all eight of the corner atoms, so the body-centered cell has a coordination number of eight. Note that any given corner atom is part of eight unit cells, so each corner atom touches eight body atoms. The cell is more efficiently packed with a packing efficiency of 68%. The face-centered cell is harder to see. If you focus on the blue atom on the front face, it clearly touches the four corner atoms. It also touches the four blue atoms behind it, nestling into the open space between those four atoms. If we were to extend the structure, there would be four more blue atoms in front that it would touch. The face-centered cell has a coordination number of 12. Geometry shows it has a packing efficiency of 74%. This is the highest efficiency among the cubic cells and is sometimes referred to as cubic close-packed. The main trend to observe is that a larger coordination number leads to more efficient packing.